What's going on, gamers, tech enthusiasts, PlayStation fans, and people who really love PlayStation? So, uh, here's a video of a comparison between the PS5 Pro and the RTX 4070. And of course, it's a bloodbath, uh, as people thought that this console would be close to that, but it's not even close. What's interesting, too, is they add in an RTX 2080, and they add in an uh, RTX 3070. But the thing here is that they all get downclocked to match the PS5 specs and they downforce the resolution on Digital Foundry to see if the PlayStation 5 can even come close by doing that. And you guys are going to be in shock uh, by the results here. So my thing here is, is this is not about downplaying the PS5 Pro. No, this is giving people the reality of how things work. How rumors need to be shot down. Uh, just gaslighting. Uh, and boys making up stuff and putting it in people's head and making them believe stuff that isn't real. Well, as you see here, I have the Xbox, uh, the PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, high-end gaming PC. I've always owned them all. I've been gaming for 30 plus years, so I support everything. Now, we're going to get into this and you are going to see how things actually work. I'm also going to show you what I said months ago. And yeah, we're going to continue doing this. All right, y'all. I like comment and subscribe. Let's go. It's finally starting to show. One thing that I've said in the past is that the frames would be counted. And also, I was wrong. I spoke out of turn when I made my video yesterday and said mm -hmm. I'd look through the internet and no one had done a proper comparison with the PS5 Pro and an RTX 4070. However, I stand corrected because apparently some of my audience members pointed out to me and said digital foundry just proved that the 4070 is 43 percent faster than a pro in their latest alan wake 2 ps5 pro video i said there's no way 43 percent faster that's crazy so i jumped over to their channel and apparently they have a video where they did the alan wake comparison to 43 minute tech showcase i think it's probably very detailed and I got to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, it was not easy watching this video from ground up. I literally had to wade through a lot of what this particular showcase was doing. And to be honest, as well, for the second time, I did not get to the end. I never made it to the end. It wasn't until later that I saw this particular, you know, comment about the 43 percent and some others. I started to look through and say, where did they get 43 percent from? And that's because I stopped somewhere around where they were talking about ray tracing and such. Apparently, the 43% speed in Alan Wake 2 was buried way at the end of the video. That's literally where they came to put the FPS comparisons. Now, what did they do? Well, one of the very first things that you'll see here is they had to actually force down the resolution of the game on PC to match the PS5 Pro's resolution. So they actually were not using a base resolution of you know, something that I think would be impressive or something that even the 4070 could handle. They have to basically push it down to 864p. So, yeah, think about what he's saying. They're downscaling that on PC. The car's not running at its capabilities. It's trying to be forced against what it doesn't actually do to see what it would compare to on a PlayStation 5 with the same pretty much specs. So who's going to do that on PC, though? No, I'm going to get a better CPU. I'm going to get a better RAM. They don't even have on frame generation. You put all that on this thing shooting up to 90, 100 frames per second. It blows it out of the water. You know what I mean? And that's 43% forcing it that way. It's a lot more powerful than that. And, you know, let me show you guys something that I've said on my channel. Like, but PS5 Pro, actual specs, any release date. This is almost three months ago. $600, stop lying to people. PC gamers tech will understand. And I explained everything here, how that worked. And then going up, I said PS5 Pro, discless drive, fake specs. Two terabyte SSD option? What happened? 600 to 700 bucks? Not 33 teraflops. Was I right? 700 bucks, two terabyte SSD option. You know. Uh, going up here, PlayStation 5 Pro video was a console dummy show. It's CPU limited, which I try to tell people. That's why you can't get what you can get on there because it's CPU limited. Then I said it can match a 4070. No, wait, 4080, 4090, stop. You have some people really just going off the deep end who just don't understand how technology works. PS5 Pro GPU tested as close to RTX 4060 Ti. But as a matter of fact, it's not. It, it, it It's even struggling to compete with the 4060. Watch this, y'all. This guy was trying to say 4070 here, right? I said, and this is, this is two months ago now. 
Dude, it's, it does not have 33 teraflops. It's more like 14 to 15, maybe a bit more. It's trying to compete with a 4060. They are paid off to promote nonsense, manipulating numbers with ray tracing on. It's a damn 4060 with the same CPU and RAM. I'm getting tired of this fantasy nonsense people are making up to make a mid AMD PC with the PS5 label on and look better than it is. Then I explained that the 33 teraflops is FP calculation later on, which this guy understands that too. And I said, yeah, floating point, but it's misleading. That's like me saying that PlayStation 5 is 20 teraflops and the Series X is 24. Because this is machine learning manipulation. You can find, I'll do that for y'all at the end of the video and show you what that really means. Because that's not like actually true as we see here right now. Um, and did pretty much a so, similar yeah. setting based on what the PS5 Pro had. And this picture pretty much sums it up. You have hardware that is dedicated GPU, pretty much showing that it is better than the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, this is no surprise to anybody who was, yeah, you know, in a sense, objective about what the outcome was more than likely going to be, because for the most part, this was already, you know, suspected by people who tried to be objective in this conversation. However, there's something or I think a few things that need to be pointed out. Number one, if you're buying a PlayStation 5 Pro and you want to go ahead and upgrade your own PlayStation 5 console, we have nothing against you. You are fine. Buy yeah. a PS5 Pro console, flex that money, never allow anybody tell you what you need to do with your money. You could take their recommendation if they're you know, giving it, but at the end of the day, you worked hard and you should be able to enjoy what you want to enjoy. So this particular conversation in terms of the metrics and in terms of the numbers and the analysis is not directed at anyone who wants to buy themselves a PS5 Pro. I've, yeah, I've never made a video telling somebody not to do that. My videos are all about telling people what it is, what it isn't, shooting down the rumors and the lies. You can watch all my tech videos. I never once said don't buy it. Do I agree with the price? No, because they forced it with the two terabytes. It should have been a $600 console. But once again, I'm not going to tell somebody that you shouldn't buy it. I don't care if you do or not. That's your choice. I own all the consoles. I always will. No, this is about how things actually work. I don't care about all the other stuff. I'm trying to be real here and be genuine. However, it is designed to actually point out the lies, yes. the gaslighting that were actually put out here on the Internet from so-called YouTubers, people who tweet on Twitter about the consoles that this PS5 Pro hardware was going to somehow be in the same league as the 4070. And you know what? The positive thing for me in this video is I have to actually give it to the PlayStation 5 Pro. If you were to have, say, this particular scales, it's still doing well for a console. Yeah. The one thing, though, that I can't give it is the price point, which I've said that the price to performance ratio never really did make any sense in the grand scheme of things. Plus, one of the things that you have to take into consideration is when you're actually looking at hardware, you can do all kinds of calculations. You can do, you know, cost per frame. You can do all kinds of different percentage increases. They said it was 43% faster. What is the percentage increase that they actually raised it from? The folk at Digital Foundry had to then go back and get a 3070 to try to even see if they could get a, you know, GPU that would work somewhat similarly and the 3070 was still slightly faster, which is an older GPU, but I still think it's impressive because there was a time I was looking at a 3070 as a GPU that I would have considered to put in my rig. Yeah, but if you give the 3070 uh, the frame generation and give it the CPU and RAM without limiting it, though, of course, I mean, I know what you're saying, like the skeleton is this box, but this PC is not stuck like that. You can upgrade it, whereas the PS5 only has that. You can't change the parts around. That's why I say that on PC, I would, just think about it, guys. You wouldn't get that on PC. You would get a better CPU. You would get a better RAM. You would put it at it. This is downforce for, for what it's capable of doing. This is what it's capable of doing. This is handicapping it. Let's think about this. So it's going to hit well over that uh, with frame generation. It's going to be at like 65, 70. This is going to go to 95, 100. You know what I mean? Uh, so definitely if you put it at that, this is just something just to understand because there's more systems. They're just trying to do this just to even show you that's the problem with this is that it's cpu and ram limited these are not which is nothing wrong with it but still this is with you still handicapping these gpus and it's not even beating the 2080 handicapped so just think about it they're using an older gpu 
They are because this is completed uh, unhandicapped. This will go up to 55 to 60. Forcing down their resolution. And the video In systems fact, are amazing. They used a specific software to actually force the resolution down for them to be able to actually take these analyses into consideration. So by and large for the Alan Wake 2 game, there's seemingly right now almost no way to actually test out the capability of the PlayStation 5 in its full blown, you know, explosion when, you know, compared to the 4070, the 3070 or even the 2080 Ti in their full blown, you know, configuration. So this is them basically running at the max possible resolution and frame rate that you can get out of them. So the PS5 Pro is, in my opinion, old technology. And again, mm -hmm. this is educational for a reason. AMD oh, we're doing. and NVIDIA, they make their graphics cards and they make their graphics processing and their devices based on slightly different technology. The R so you see Sony's trying to convince you that their price is like amazing. It's not really. It's solid. It should be $600. The one terabyte and the disk drive in there I'm trying to force that because you have the option to change that out if you need it you know what i mean uh whereas everything else cannot be changed out so they should have focused on something else same thing with the hard drive you know you could change that in and out with the ssd but you know why, why force that you know but rtx series really were an advancement in the gpu technology it really brought a different level to the game and amd has not necessarily been able to keep up with NVIDIA, I think they're almost, no, they've already, you know, signaled and bowed out that they weren't even going to be going for the high-end GPUs anymore. Now, this doesn't mean that AMD is fully crushed in this regard. AMD does have the technology that can deliver raw power, yeah. where they can you can get a system built under AMD that will basically blaze FPS with no regard. It's when it comes to ray tracing and some of the other things like upscaling that it doesn't match what NVIDIA has in play. So when I build my $650 you know, PC build, you can see it on the bottom right corner of the screen, I think that build is more than likely in raw power with the 6750 XT, we'll be able to pretty much go head to head with the PlayStation 5 Pro if we were to be able to find scenarios for raw power, but that's just a hypothesis. We still need to wait for some other games to come in place. And also that CPU was a Ryzen 5 5500. So there might be some, hold, some drawbacks with that CPU, but at the end of the day, I strongly believe that the suspicions that we had about this particular PS5 Pro is quite interesting. Now, here's what's crazy. I don't have any suspicions. If this PlayStation 5 Pro needed to have the PC comparisons handicapped, and when I say handicapped, downscaled, yeah. I wonder what could be inside of its own GPU, because this GPU seems to give the notion that it is a 6700 non XT. But the reality is, could it be actually in terms of the hardware for the base PS5 anyways, could that 6700 non XT be a overestimation of the GPU that's in there? While- Yeah, the PS5 has something like a 2070. The 2080 is more like the Series X. The PS5 Pro is probably now coming close to the 6750 XT. Or yeah, because the PS5 Pro right here says it's losing to the RX 6800 four-year-old gpu that that's how you know like you know that they're trying to make you think something new is coming out but that that's not the case it's not the way things work so we go down here it was hitting 60 and they capped it it can go past that the 6800 is actually a really good card for amd it can compete with the 4060 and i'll class it in certain situations but if the video puts on frame generation not happening but your systems are just insane that's the thing or even closer to 6800 I don't necessarily think we can rule those out anymore. This hardware piece is only being sold by perception. And when the data point comes into place, it doesn't necessarily seem like we have, you know, this particular uh, reality match the hype that was put out there. This must be a lesson to those who came out with a lot of the noise talking about all of this stuff. Sit like, down. Oh, this is going to match the 4070 people coming out. Grown man here speaking to gaslight other folk saying, you know, you're threatened by the PlayStation 5 Pro, blah, 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 blah. When in reality, if you actually have to run a comparison with these mid range GPUs from three, four years ago, you actually have to go ahead and force down the resolution to try to see what, you know, you can get out of them when in reality.
And then you have a lot of people think, oh, it's a console. I can use more. Guys, that stuff's outdated now. With all these systems that PC has, it actually has an advantage. That doesn't work anymore. You can actually change things around to be like that, to dedicate fully. They have settings now to do that. Plus the frame generation, the deal like, no, it doesn't work like that anymore. So you guys get the picture here. I'm going to link his video in my description if you want to watch more of it. And if you want to look up the Digital Foundry video, just look up the Alan Wake video and you could see even more full in-depth analysis if you guys want to go into like every detail imaginable, but you have your answer, right? So this is about giving you guys the realistic reality of how things work here. This is not about saying, go get the PC over the PS5, PC Masters, right? Play where the games are available at. Why do I own our consoles and I've always had it? Because with me, it's about software. I love Nintendo the most because they have the best development on the planet. They always have. They don't sell out. They don't have that woke DI garbage come into their uh, community. They lead and strive, uh, make gaming fun, and let people know what gaming is really about. They don't focus on all this nonsense. And um, why do I own other consoles outside of that too? Because they have games that are not uh, elsewhere. Where am I going to get the, uh, the games at if they're only here? So to me, it's all about the games. That's why I own everything so I can play whatever game I want. You'll end up spending more money on microtransaction games, idle subs, all that than you would on a machine over the period of the time that you own it. So, you know, get what you want. And that's my thing. All right, y'all, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be doing this for years. I also do controversy, exposure. Uh, you know, there's a lot of drama on my channel, streaming, uh, video game content. I do everything. We're going to be doing this for a very, very, very long time. You know, so like I say, hit that sub button and let me know what y'all think. I want to hear y'all's opinions. I want to see what you guys um, feel about this and everything. All right, y'all. Have a good day, evening, morning, night, wherever you're at. Peace.